Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well in your lives and are enthusiastic to learn something new. So let's begin today's class. Guys, this is the timetable for Arya Sabi and Nabat live courses, and this is our mobile application. I hope all of you are about uh, aware about the application as well as the channels through which you can reach out to us, like the mobile number and our email ID. Now let's begin with the questions. So the very first question is recently Indian Institute of Geomagnetism an autonomous research institution under DST that is Department of Science and Technology has developed first indigenous overhauser magnetometer of India at the Alibag Magnetic Observatory where is the institute located so here we are talking about the Indian Institute of Geomagnetism so where is it located it is located in Mumbai Okay, this institution is located in Mumbai and Alibag is in Maharashtra. So this entire thing is happening in Maharashtra. Okay, now what is the benefit of this magnetometer? Okay, so obviously this magnetometer is known for its high accuracy. It has high accuracy, high sensitivity and efficient power consumption is also there in this magnetometer. Therefore, it has been installed at an observatory now apart from this we do not have to go into the depths of this news because that is not at all going to help all of us be it the students or the mentor it is not going to help us in any way because the examiner is not going to ask a descriptive question on it right because we are preparing phase one current affairs there you have objective questions and from the objective questions point of view i have covered every detail that can be asked okay so even if you haven't understand understood what the uh, magnetometer is that is fine okay because i myself don't understand what's the use of this magnetometer okay however on the uh, surface level i understand that is it is useful in magnetic observations of the world but exactly what is the minute or what is the applicability of it it can only be understood by the science students or the people who are interested in the space science and everything okay so let's just leave it here and move on to the next question which is of course very very important question so union ministry of forest and environment has given its approval to the terai elephant reserve which covers 3049 square kilometers including dudwa tiger reserve and pilbhit tiger reserve located in lakhimpur and pilbhit district the reserve is being developed under the project elephant when was the project launched so a very easy question in my point of view because directly the year of launch of the project elephant has been asked from you and if you have read about this news you must be aware of the launch year so here the right answer is 1992 okay now guys let me first give you a glimpse of certain projects for uh, project elephant we have discussed launched in 1992 and what could be the purpose the purpose is to ensure the conservation of elephants in india we have project tiger as well and we have project cheetah as well. okay so these are some of the very flagship uh, projects run by the ministry of environment for ensuring the uh, welfare and conservation of major animals okay most important animals to the biodiversity now this project cheetah was there in the news specifically because under this project cheetah recently that is on september 17th the prime minister's birthday the cheetahs were brought into india from namibia so eight cheetahs were brought five were females three were males and this is a very uh, you can say current affair very recent news so you should be aware of the entire news and this entire transfer of the cheetahs from one continent to the other, another continent is termed as the project cheetah okay so this transfer is now being termed as project cheetah so you should be aware of that as well okay now what is the launch year of project tiger this is your question you are going to tell me in the comment section bill now let's discuss this news of the elephant reserve so we are going to get a new elephant reserve in india and it would be india's 33rd elephant reserve okay and it will be located in uttar pradesh so it will be uttar pradesh second elephant reserve okay so these facts are important these numbers are important for you to remember now this 
terai elephant reserve is going to be so large that it will subsume the dudhwa tiger reserve and pilbhit tiger reserve under its coverage okay now it does not mean that the tiger reserve dudhwa and pilbhit will be removed or will be uh, crashed or whatever you want to say will be encroached by this terai elephant reserve it will not happen the tigers living in pilbhit tiger reserve and dudhwa tiger reserve are going to stay in the tiger reserves only it's just that the terai uh, elephant reserves area is huge okay so it's like this boundary and here you have the pilbhit or uh, the uh, other dudhwa tiger reserve okay so it is like this but however i have drawn this uh, very shady image you don't have to look it and uh, look into it just understand what i'm trying to tell you theek hai zyada achhi drawing mein karti nahi hu um okay so we have read about the tiger reserve i hope you have understood what is going to happen the tiger reserves and the elephant reserve now what is happening here understand that dudhwa tiger reserve will be the only national park okay in uttar pradesh that will protect and conserve tiger one horned rhinoceros asian elephants and the swamp deer okay obviously it is a tiger reserve but that does not mean other animals would not live there. ओके ऐसा नहीं है कि टाइगर रिजर्व है तो टाइगर अलाउ नहीं करेगा दूसरे एनिमल्स को खा जाए वो बात अलग है बट अलाउ तो करता है ठीक है इट्स नॉट लाइक ह्यूमंस तो टाइगर रिजर्व है सो द दुधवा टाइगर रिजर्व व्हिच इज आल्सो अ नेशनल पार्क सो दिस नेशनल पार्क हैज टाइगर वन हॉर्न राइनोसॉरस एशियन एलिफेंट्स एंड स्वॉम्प डियर एंड इट हैज अ गुड नंबर ऑफ दीस एनिमल्स ओके नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द a uh, project elephant i have already told you that under the project elephant we have 33 uh, elephant reserves in india and the latest one is going to be the second elephant reserve of uttar pradesh so here i have certain special no knowledge nuggets for all of you first is that project elephant was launched in 1992 ye to humne abhi question mein bhi discuss kiya ki ye project 1992 mein launch kiya tha and which ministry could launch it it is obviously the ministry of environment forest and climate change when do we celebrate the elephant day so it is august 12 now what is the theme of this day this is your question you are going to tell me because we have discussed it in the month of august definitely it discuss to kiya hi hoga now india has the largest and the most stable population of asian elephants and elephants and india account for more than 60% of all the asian elephants population in the world so that is a huge responsibility on the shoulders of india that we need to protect these uh, uh, animals okay because they are a part of the biodiversity and they are very important for the ecosystem as well now we have another very important statement now i will let you know why i'm saying that this statement is very important because in your rbi examination i guess it was an rbi or nabard but there was a question on mic okay mic pe question pucha gaya tha mic program ke upar that this program is related to which animals conservation so it is related to the elephants conservation this was the question okay now let's discuss about this a program also so monitoring the illicit killing of elephants that is mic program was launched in 2003 and it was launched under a treaty so that treaty is known as cites that is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so this is the cites treaty or convention whatever you want to say so under this convention this mic program was launched and it particularly caters to the conservation of elephants and this is a very important uh, i would say initiative so please remember it and also remember the scope of this program which is restricted to africa and asia because here the elephants are found in a very huge uh, population okay the majority of the elephant population is there in africa and asia only Okay so question number 3 Meghalaya government has signed an MOU with the Credit Guarantee Fund Trust for micro and small enterprises to implement the Meghalaya Credit Guarantee scheme the MOU will strengthen the credit del delivery system and facilitate the flow of credit to the MSC sector 
the total corpus of the mcgs is rupees 250 crores considering the average loan size of rupees 1 lakh more than 25000 units would be supported through this state government scheme what is the percentage of this coverage by the uh, this coverage given by this state scheme you can understand this point i know it's a little bit hazy here because we haven't read about the scheme so you will understand what is the meaning of this risk coverage when my when i discuss you uh, discuss with you the entire scheme but first let's know the answer of this question so the answer is 95 percent okay so what has happened recently meghalaya government has signed an mou with this credit guarantee fund trust for micro and small enterprises now before moving ahead with anything else let me inform you that this trust is managed and owned by the ministry of msme okay don't be in a confusion that it is managed by the ministry of finance because it is very easy to confuse it with the ministry of finance because the ministry of finance is already operating the emergency credit line guarantee scheme okay so don't confuse it with that it is a separate trust managed and operated by the ministry of msm now beginning uh, moving ahead meghalaya government has signed this mou with this trust and the basic idea of uh, this mou is to implement this meghalaya credit guarantee scheme now under this cre credit guarantee fund trust for micro and small enterprises what happens that this trust provides guarantee to the banks okay what kind of guarantee the guarantee is that if the borrower is unable to pay you back then we will pay you back on behalf of the borrower now, now who is this we this is the government okay because the ministry of uh, msme is going to provide the funding to this trust okay now what is the benefit of doing that the benefit is that the msmes are going to get the liquidity which was much needed during the time of covid pandemic okay so that we can uh, give a push to the msme sector this fund was launched now what was the loophole the loophole is that this guarantee was restricted to only 75 percent of the total amount suppose this borrower has borrowed rupees thousand now out of this rupees thousand the government was providing the guarantee for up to rupees 750 and remaining 250 was at the risk of the bank now the banks were reluctant to give the loans to the msmes even after getting 75 percent of risk coverage because in to 250 rupees bhi ja raha tha na. so banks were reluctant to even lose their 25 percent of the money now what happened meghalaya government came into the picture and it realized this reluctance of the banks and then it launched this Meghalaya credit guarantee scheme. Now under this scheme, the Meghalaya government provides the, uh, provides the, uh, this coverage up to 95%. Okay. So that now the banks can provide loans to the MSMEs. But remember, it is a state scheme to all the MSMEs which are operating and registered in the Meghalaya state will be eligible to borrow under the Meghalaya Credit Guarantee Scheme. Okay, So that is a limitation of the scheme, of course. But apart from this, this scheme is going to give a boost to the MSMEs operating in the state of Meghalaya. And that is the crux of this news. I hope you have understood the news completely it is only written here in words you can read it on your own i have make uh, i have explained the entire news to you now one more thing is there that the total corpus of this mcgs is 250 crores and it will begin with 5 crores okay the initial corpus of this scheme is going to be rupees 5 crores they will see uh, whether the scheme is successful or not whether it, msmes are taking loans under this scheme or not and the banks are willing to give the loans or not okay so that operability or that success of this scheme will be tested in this initial phase and the corpus of this initial phase would be of rupees 5 crore but but remember that the total corpus of the scheme is 250 crore and you have to focus on this amount only okay this is just for your information that is why I have skipped mentioning this amount in the statement here. Okay. Now one more thing that the average loan size would be of rupees 1 lakh. 
that is also important for you to remember and if you divide 1 lakh with 250 crore you will get 25,000 units this is not at all important for you to remember these two amounts are important okay now question number four which edition of the Singapore India maritime bilateral exercise is conducted in 2022 so here 29th edition of Simbax Simbax was organized okay Simbax sounds like Simba right so this 29th edition of this Singapore India maritime bilateral exercise uh, was held from 26th to 30th October at Vishakapat now Vishakapatnam is there in the news let me inform you that recently in Vishakapatnam only Tiger Triumph exercise was conducted I hope all of you remember it between India and US so it is a humanitarian assistance disaster relief exercise of the tri forces okay of India and US coming back to Simbex Simbex first started in the year 1994 and when it was launched its name was exercise Lion King now it has been uh, changed into Simbex and it is a Navy exercise okay so it is very easy to remember Simbex full form is Singapore India maritime bilateral exercise okay so it's a Navy, Navy exercise now the army exercise of India and Singapore is board Kurukshetra the trilateral exercises Sitmex, Singapore India and Thailand so these are the exercises in which India and Singapore collaborate and this much is important now whenever we discuss about the joint military exercises there is one plus point for all the aspirants and that plus point is that India conducts its air force exercise with a limited number of countries and that is the plus point for all of you because you have a limited content now to remember so with Singapore we do not have any air force exercise the army valley we have discussed and this is also a naval exercise Simbex is also a naval exercise okay I hope we are clear till this point now there is one more fact that I want to highlight that is the capital of Singapore and the currency so capital is very easy Singapore's capital is Singapore only so Singapore city is the capital of Singapore country currency is Singapore dollar dollar now guys uh, I'm going to spend just 10 seconds on this picture and then I will move ahead I know that I'm loading you with all the facts but but remember these facts are very important and once you revise such facts on a daily basis then only it will enter your subconscious and then only you will be able to answer it in the examination form okay now this is the map of the asia nation let me quickly go uh, revise you the nations so myanmar thailand laos cambodia cambodia vietnam these are the five countries above of asia then malaysia singapore indonesia uh, uh, Brunei and Philippines these are the five countries below okay in the sets of five five countries you will be easily able to remember the countries of Asia so here is the Singapore nation and this is the Malacca Strait okay Malacca Strait ke mein to aapne kaafi baar suna yoga that if Indian Navy blocks this Malacca Strait then it will be a very a hard hitting reply to China because majority of China's trade is rooted through the Malacca Strait. okay now I would like to ask a question from all of you this is an island of Indonesia you all agree tell me the name of this island this is your top you are going to tell me and this is the map of Singapore okay Chand or Sitare Lal or Safed this is the map uh, this is the flag sorry not the map sorry okay question number five is where has the Prime Minister Narendra Modi Laid the foundation stone of C-295 aircraft manufacturing plant. So here guys, Badodra is the right answer. Today, all the launches are going on, all of you are in Gujarat. So it makes it easier for you to remember it. Guys, this is the C-295 uh, aircraft which is going to be inducted in the Indian Air Force and it will replace a very significant airplane of uh, the Air Force okay I will discuss about it but first have a look at this C-95 aircraft of the Indian Air Force now guys we have read about this fact that air, uh, the C-295 aircraft manufacturing plant ha uh, will be developed in Badodra who is going to develop it Tata 
एडवांस सिस्टम लिमिटेड एंड एयर बस डिफेंस एंड स्पेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नो वन मोर थिंग दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू हियर इज दैट दिस एयर बस इज अ पैन यूरोपियन कंपनी बिकॉज इट हैज इट्स ऑपरेशन इन फ्रांस इन स्पेन इन जर्मनी इन नीदरलैंड सो इट इज अ पैन यूरोपियन कंट्री कंपनी देर फॉर यू डू नॉट नीड टू नो द एग्जैक्ट हेड क्वार्टर्स ऑफ एयर बस बिकॉज दैट वुड कंफ्यूज यू बिकॉज इट हैज इट्स ऑपरेशन अक्रॉस डिफरेंट कंट्रीज नाउ first of all i would like to take you to the many first that are attached to this c295 manufacturing plant first of all it is going to be the first time that the military aircraft will be manufactured by a private company tata is involved here and tata is a private company tata advanced system limited so ye pehli baar hoga ki private company develop karegi aircrafts okay and this is a very big a uh, step towards the uh, privatization you can say privatization of defense manufacturing but i would not say it as privatization because it is just giving the opportunity to the private sector and a relief to the government also because government ke paas budget hi nahi hai defense pe kharch karne ke liye that is why they have come up with the agni path scheme so that they can cut down on the budget expenditure uh, on the pensions and the salaries of the people and they can spend it on the modernization and if we look at this as an opportunity then obviously the private money is going to be pumped into the defense manufacturing and it will help the government as well as the private sector to tap this potential area now coming back to the other first now this is going to be the first time this aircraft will be manufactured outside europe okay in india so these are the two first that are associated with this manufacturing plant now there is more to this plant i am going to take you through the news quickly first of all i told you that it has its operations across the europe but the c295 manufacturing plant is located in spain okay so this is an important fact please remember it from this spain facility we are going to borrow or uh, not borrow exactly procure the uh, aircraft 16 c295 aircraft so what happened in 2021 india has uh partnered with this airbus company for 56 c295 aircrafts okay to procure c295 aircrafts now out of these 56 aircraft 16 will be procured or rather you can say import and the remaining 40 will be manufactured in india only so in this manner you can clearly see that the government is focusing more and more on the indigenization of the defense equipment kisi aur sector mein indigenization manufacturing hui ho ya na hui ho india is definitely moving to ahead in the indigenization of defense equipments fourth positive indigenization list bhi abhi abhi release ki gayi thi by the ministry of defense and how many products are mentioned in that list this is your question okay so we have discussed about the entire project 2021 mein this project was signed the total corpus of this project is approximately 25 21000 crore itna hi yaad rakhna hai this piche ka amount yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi because you will get confused you have many more corpuses to remember so you can just remember approximately 21000 crore sometimes the amounts of such big procurements are asked in the examination that is why i am telling you to remember this amount. second thing is 56 C295 aircrafts will be procured in India. Out of which 16 will be procured in flyaway condition, and 40 will be manufactured with the help of this Airbus company. Third point here is that it is going to replace Avro 748 planes. Okay, this is another important fact and very very important fact I would say. The plants, uh, the aircrafts. from the spain will be procured by 2023 to 2025 and the uh, aircrafts which will be manufactured in india they will be start they will be manufactured by 2026 okay abhi to plant ki hi foundation stone lagai gayi hai so it is going to take time uh, the plant will be established and then it will start manufacture the next question is who heads irdai's new panel for expanding affordable and com- comprehensive cover for the rural population so here thomas m devasia is the right answer so this 
committee has been created by IRDAI just to ensure that the affordable and comprehensive health insurance cover can be spread across the rural population because we know that insurance penetration is very low if we talk about the rural India and if we talk about pan India then also the insurance penetration is very low especially in health and life okay segments so here the committee is going to plan out the roadmap for spreading the Bhima Vista okay this Bhima Vista would be the name of the insurance product okay so under which the affordable and comprehensive cover will be spread across the rural population i hope you are understanding this point it is just that this committee is going to recommend ways to idea to spread the insurance cover now the insurance cover product will be named as bima vista okay the committee will also recommend ways to create the women centering centric distribution channel to focus on reaching the untapped and rural areas okay so this distribution channel will be called as the bima vahak vahak is what the channel which is used for mobilization so they will be the carriers of the bima from one place to another place and this in this manner the women also get employment and they will be empowered okay so that is also another aim of this panel or rather the task one more task is there of the panel that is to bring synergies in Bhima Vahak, in Bhima Vistar and Bhima Sugam. Okay, now how will the synergies be brought in? First of all, I hope you remember this Bhima Sugam is an online portal. So probably the Bhima Vahak and Bhima Vistar will be integrated on the Bhima Sugam portal and through the portal, the people can buy the insurance product called the Bhima Vahak and sorry, Bhima Vistar and uh, the Bhima Vahaks can also get themselves registered on the Bhima Sugam to become the Bhima Vahak. Okay, so this could be the roadmap or the plan which this IRDI may be focusing on. Okay. The next question is also related to IRDI because it has also constituted another committee. So, who heads the IRDAI's Health Insurance Consultative Committee? So, here Rakesh Joshi is the right answer. So, again, in order to increase the penetration of the health insurance, this Rakesh Joshi committee has been created. Now, guys, let's talk about certain facts, static facts that can be asked in the examination. Or even if they are not asked in the examination, it is just to broaden your mindset and information base. First of all, this Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India is a regulatory body under the Ministry of Finance and secondly it is also a statutory body because it has come into existence with, with the help of a statute that is Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority Act of 1999. Now guys this Authority Act is different and Insurance Act is different. So we have one more act that is Insurance Act which was passed way before the Authority Act which is in 1938. So we have two acts related to insurance. One is Insurance Act, which uh, looks upon the insurance activity in India. And this is particularly for the authority, IIDA. Okay. Now the headquarters, very, very important fact of the IIDA is in Hyderabad. And the current chairperson is Debashish Pan. So these are some of the facts. I hope you have enjoyed. Question number eight is, Recently, the Gujarat government has become the seventh state to achieve 100% tap water connections in rural areas under the Jal Jeevan Mission. The vision of the scheme is that every rural household has a drinking water supply in adequate quantity of prescribed quality on a regular and long-term basis at affordable service delivery charges, leading to improvement in the living standards of rural communities. What is the quantity of water supply prescribed by the scheme per person per day? So guys, if you have read the scheme thoroughly, only then you can answer such a question. Or you know, sir, upar upar se padha hai, ye question bhi unke upar se nikal gaya. Ka mujhe pata. Okay. Now coming to the questions answer. So the answer is 55 liters per day. News you have read in the question itself. Gujarat has become the seventh state which has achieved the target of providing 100% uh, tap water connection in the rural areas. Okay. Now this. Achievement, this fiat was achieved on a very significant day. That is 
द न्यू ईयर ऑफ गुजरात ओके सो गुजराती सेलिब्रेट द न्यू ईयर आफ्टर दिवाली ओके दिवाली इज द इज द मार्किंग ऑफ द न्यू ईयर फॉर द गुजराती जेठालाल के सीरियल में भी देखा होगा आपने तारक मेहता में दे सेलिब्रेट दिस ओके सो अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स वॉज द न्यू ईयर एंड ऑन दैट डे ओनली दिस फीट वॉज अचीव discussing about the jal jeevan mission so it was launched in 2019 the basic aim of this scheme is to provide 55 liters of water per day per person to every rural household and remember rural but rural household by 2024 till now these seven state and union territories have uh, achieved this target so goa telangana and andaman nicobar dadar nagar haveli and daman and diu Puducherry, Haryana, and Gujarat. These are the seven states and union territories which have so far achieved the target of the Jal Jeevan Mission. Now I can only teach you this much regarding this scheme because the time frame is restricted. But guys, believe me, Manish sir has extensively covered this Jal Jeevan Mission scheme in the document as well as on the video also. YouTube pe available hai. Please go and watch the video. Even if you want to watch some other mentors video, please watch it. But this scheme ko zaroor cover karna. It is a very very flagship scheme. Okay. Now, चलो थोड़ा गुजरात भी देख लेते हैं कुछ दिन गुजरात में गुजार ना सके पर कोई बात नहीं गुजरात से रिलेटेड कुछ फैक्ट्स पता कर लेते हैं पहली चीज तो आई वॉन्ट टू हाई लाइट द रिसेंट सिटीज द न्यूज रिसेंट न्यूज रिलेटेड टू सर्टन सिटीज इन गुजरात फर्स्ट इज मोरबी रिसेंटली यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट द मोरबी ब्रिज को लैप्स so morbi bridge collapse uh, has caused many people's death but there are certain facts which you as aspirant need to focus on okay however it was a very unfortunate incident but still as aspirants we need to discuss about this event also so morbi bridge was created on machuchu river in morbi district of gujarat let me show you the morbi district so here guys this is morbi district okay so here uh, on the machuchu river uh, the bridge was constructed and it was uh, it was not constructed it was renovated recently very recently and now it has collapsed the other city or rather village it is a village modhera village i hope all of you remember this village recently we have discussed about it it has become india's first 24/7 solar powered village okay so that is important now the third city the third is this rajkot so in rajkot india urban housing conclave was organized in october only so these are the october current affairs related to gujarat only so remember these facts i hope you have memorized it now so sometimes we geography related questions are also asked therefore i have put this map here so let's quickly look at the land border sharing states of gujarat first is rajasthan second is madhya pradesh third is maharashtra so these are the three big states which share the land border with gujarat and we have the union territory of dadar and nagar haveli and daman and diu okay so these are the four land border sharing units uh, with gujarat okay so please remember this fact and one interesting fact is also there that when the topic of cancer passes or uh, it goes from india actually i have drawn a very hazy line it is not a straight line but let it be okay so it passes from gujarat and till mizoram there are eight states which are covered by this topic of cancer and gujarat is the first state from west to east if you look at the topic of cancer now one more fact is there related to gujarat area wise it is the fifth largest population wise it is the ninth largest okay apart from this don't focus on anything else gdp wise it is the fourth largest okay five five Fourth, ninth का formula है गुजरात के लिए fifth largest area, fourth largest GDP and ninth largest population. Question number nine. S S Raja Mauli's period epic R R R has won the best international film award. Dash. So it has won it at Saturn Awards. So I hope you have or uh, watched this movie. Amazing movie. Now S S Raja Mauli's Uh, RRR has won the best 
इंटरनेशनल फिल्म अवार्ड एट दी सैटन अवार्ड सैटन अवार्ड हु गिव दिस अवार्ड सो इट इज गिवन बाय दी कैलिफोर्निया बेस्ड अकेडमी ऑफ साइंस फिक्शन फैंटेसी एंड हॉर फिल्म सो इट इज बेस्ड इन यूएस the movie was nominated in best action and adventure film also and ss rajamouli was nominated in best director also the film which has got the saturn award for the best film tom cruise's top gun maverick top top gun maverick is the name of the movie in which tom cruise has acted last question recently swastik Uh, Sai Raj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty won the men's doubles title at the French Open Super 750 badminton tournament. The men's singles um, at the tournament has been won by the world number one player Victor Axelsson of Denmark. Women's single has been won by whom? So it has been won by He Bingjiao. So she is from China, and this is the picture of uh, Swastik Ranjan. Swastik. uh sairaj tanki reddy and dichirag shetty who have won the men's doubles title victor excelson denmark men's single and he bingjao china women single okay i hope you remember he is number 1 and she is world's number 10 women single badminton player if we talk about women single top player then it is akane yamaguchi from japan okay So dear yeah, guys I would like to end this video thank you so much for watching this video have a good day